Commissioner, uh, welcome to the show. You know, this virus is not just spreading, but also evolving with this subvariant BA5. What's the department's recommendation to the public right now? Well, we know that BA5 is a highly transmissible subvariant of the Omicron variant. Uh, we know that it has a propensity for uh, invading, uh, evading immunity and invading uh, the respiratory tract. So we really want uh, everyone to be aware that uh, community levels are increasing, our cases in our hospitals are increasing. Uh, and so in addition to basic hygienic good principles, washing your hands frequently, staying home if you're sick, disinfecting surfaces, we really want you to be uh, careful about indoor spaces. We strongly encourage masking in indoor spaces. Uh, we encourage you uh, to increase ventilation in indoor spaces, um, opening up windows, uh, um, you know, facing uh, uh, fans towards windows to, to uh, push air out uh, of indoor spaces. Uh, we recommend uh, masking in uh, uh, outdoor spaces if it's very crowded. Uh, we know that outdoor spaces are safer than indoor, but if it's a crowded outdoor space in a highly transmissible BA5 environment, you're again at risk. Um, we know masking is, is effective, 88% uh, effective. Um, so we encourage it. Um, we encourage all your hygienic practices. We encourage you again to just be aware of who you are and what you need to do to protect yourself based on your own health and to protect those that you interact with based on particularly their health, elderly people, immunocompromised individuals that you may come in contact with. So essentially, Commissioner, is this again about personal responsibility short of reinstating a mask mandate? I mean, you have the CDC making these same recommendations, particularly in those high counties that are now at uh, what they call a high risk based on their models. Is there a scenario where masks need to be uh, mandated again? You know, I think the one thing we've learned is that this virus is acting differently than any other virus we've dealt with, and we're going to, be, going to be living with it for a long period of time. So the most important thing we can do is educate people to take care of themselves and to take responsibility and accountability to do the right thing. We can't keep mandating, mandating, mandating uh, if this is going to be with us. Um, for uh, you know, the next several years. It may be circulating at different levels. We may call it endemic. No matter what, we need to learn how to protect ourselves going forward. Uh, a lot of folks, as you know, are testing at home, uh, not going into a location and, and doing a PCR test. How accurately are you able to track now this virus and how much can you do predictive modeling based off of that? Two very good questions. First of all, our predictive model from, from the very beginning did not uh, work off cases. It worked off hospitalizations and then went back to cases. Hospitalizations are our most perfect indicator at this point in time. Cases, uh, because of exactly what you just said, are probably, uh, most likely and definitely, I, should, I guess I should say, undercounted, but they're directionally correct. So as we see the cases that we do have that are reported and they're increasing, we know that the, the, the trajectory is increasing. But most of our, all of our modeling is off our hospitalizations and that allows us to sort of reverse engineer into cases. So we, we rely mostly on hospitalizations, intensive care admissions, and ventilator use. Well, and, and hospitalizations are, in fact, s slowly but, but steadily rising. So what does that say then about the severity, not just of this subvariant, but of where we're at right now? Typically, summer, the last couple of years, we haven't seen that. Well, what we have seen in the last couple of years is that after the July 4th weekend, we always see a bump up. And that's exactly what we're seeing right now. We had predicted about a thousand cases uh, in our hospital uh, today, and we have a thousand and thirteen. Uh, what we are also predicting is that it's going to stay at that level, which is a little bit higher than we've seen in prior summers. 
Uh, and I think that is a result of BA5. We did see a small tick up of ICU cases, but it does look like our ventilator use is evening out between 30 and 40 uh, individuals throughout the whole state requiring ventilators, but we're being vigilant because we know BA5 seems to like uh, uh, the respiratory tract and particularly uh, pulmonary, our lungs. So um, we're being vigilant. Uh, again, we're encouraging good hygienic practices, mask up, be vigilant, know yourself, know the people that surround you uh, and um, get to like your mask. <laughs> oh, before I let you go, Commissioner, I just want to shift topics quickly to vaccines for kids. It's been about a month since they've become available uh, for, for children under five. What's demand like in the state? What can you tell me about the uptake? Um, so let's start at uh, 12 to 17 year olds. At this point, 12 to 17 year olds, about 74 percent are vaccinated. Then we'll go to the five to 11 year olds. It's not as much about 43% of five to 11 year olds are vaccinated. So we're still collecting information on the six months to four years. We know there's about 550,000 uh, eligible uh, individuals in New Jersey in that age cohort. And we know that the uptake is quite slow. The first week, it was pretty, the first four days, by the way, it was pretty high. Uh, we got um, almost 800 um, uh, individuals, you know, kids, uh, vaccinated in that first week. And then we've seen it waning, uh, but we don't have the full number. We know for sure that about 12,000 Pfizer doses have been given. Uh, that's uh, of uh, last week, I believe. Uh, so we have a long way to go in the six months to four years. We're hoping to get up to uh, the same percentages as, as the five to 11 year olds, at least at a minimum. We want everybody to be about 70% at a minimum and we're there for the 12 and over. What's your sense then, Commissioner? Are parents of those youngest children just on the fence, waiting to see? What do you make of it? Well, I think that there's so much um, information now out there about waning immunity and uh, you know, the, you know how, how many doses and you know, certainly under three years of age, you don't give in the arm, you give in the leg. Right. I think people are overwhelmed. And our job here at the department is to try to make sure that vaccines are accessible, that they're available, that we really focus on high risk populations and that we're available to anyone that needs us for information to help to encourage people to do the right thing for themselves, for their families, for their loved ones and for the community. Health Commissioner Judy Persichelli, thank you for your time and for your insight. We appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Thank you 